you are getting ready to listen to the voice of Dr. Radi Ferguson, 2004 Olympian, four-time national judo champion, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, author, speaker, and coach. Hello, this is Radi Ferguson, and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Radi. Today, I want to talk to you about something that is very important, something that has really been critical and crucial in my life at this particular juncture. I recently, uh, I mean, I recently got got knocked down, got got knocked down, got knocked out, got put against the ropes, beat up, and sent to the corner to regroup. Uh, at the time of this recording is 2019, and in 2018, I got a voicemail um, when I left the dojo that let me know that my wife was filing for divorce. Um, there wasn't really much I could do. There wasn't really a way to, to catch myself. I was taken off, I, I was just taken off guard. A lot of things um, that I didn't know about, which occurred, had occurred. Um, I ended up finding out that there may have been some things that I could have done differently by going to therapy, et cetera, um, that I could have improved on in terms of my behavior, my deportment, et cetera. However, uh, people leave when they want to leave and people stay when they want to stay. And I don't believe in uh, divorce, but divorce happens. I also don't believe that people should stay in marriages where they feel like they're being abused, where they feel like they're being disenfranchised, or where they really feel unhappy to the point where it's messing with their mental health and wellness. So with that being said, um, as much as I enjoyed my marriage with my wife, and as much as I love her, I also love the fact that she's able to do what she wants to do and move on with her life, and then I'm able to move on with mine. The rough part, the rough part in the whole thing is that in your mind you had, I mean, I can say this, I, I had in my mind how I thought my life was going to go. Um, it had steps to it, A, B, C, and then one, two, and three. I, I looked at the progression of my life and saw myself having to, the rocking chair moments on the porch with my wife, etc., and all of a sudden my life changed. Yeah, I mean it put me against the ropes and knocked me down and knocked me out. And in the sports which I practice, some of them like boxing and mixed martial arts, um, we always say it's the punch that you don't see that knocks you out. Well, I definitely see the didn't see the punch coming, and the punch definitely knocked me down. Um, was I fully knocked out? No, I wasn't fully knocked out. But I'm telling you. It rocked me real good to the point where I almost got counted out. And the one thing that I had to do is I had to redefine what winning was for me. Because I walked around really proud of my, of my family, the things that my family has done, the way that my, um, my wife at the time had, had excelled in her career, what we did, did as a family, really pushing forth Team Ferguson, et cetera. You know, everybody making sacrifices for the greater good. And it was overwhelming and, um, and shameful to go through the, the experience of not having the family unit that I was brought up to believe in. Um, now my kids go back and forth between the two houses. Um, it is really different and I really had to find and redefine what winning is for me. What I want to talk to you today is about redefining what winning is because life changes, things change. And I can tell you that I've learned some things from sport, like in, in the sport of uh, when I do the sport of judo and jujitsu, to me, winning was, you know, winning a medal at the world championships or winning a medal at the Pan Ams or winning the Olympic trials and going to the Olympics or winning national championships. And I, and I did all those particular things and that was winning. And then as I got older, winning was coaching people to go to the Olympics, coaching people to go to the youth Olympics, coaching people in the world championships. And you have to redefine what winning is. 
And it's very difficult to redefine what winning is, especially when your redefinition of winning was what you considered to be losing. And when you have to sit down and start thinking differently about success, it, it changes you. I mean, because just think about it. I mean, I, I thought that winning a national championship was, a, I mean, was the greatest thing in the world when I was 28, 29 years old. I can't go out and fight in the, in the, in this senior national championships and win anymore. I mean, I'm too old and too slow and too hurt. So winning for me is now what I considered to be losing back then. Winning for me is showing up to practice and actually making it through the whole practice without getting injured. That's winning at 44 years old. Like the, like the redefinition of my family. What I thought what winning was during a Mother's Day or a Father's Day or a Thanksgiving is totally different now. Now winning is different. Winning is spending as much time I can with my, my children, making sure I show up to their activities, making sure that I call and text them at night, making sure that I, I pray with them over the phone and not at the bedside when they're not with me. And this it's really, really different. But redefining winning doesn't mean that you're losing. It means that you are maturing. So as you go through the process of maturation of the process of growth and you start redefining what winning is as you age, there's nothing wrong with age and cheese, age is wine, age is we all age. And as things age, they actually get better because time plus experience equals wisdom. So as you go through this maturation process, as it, through this growth process, and you redefine what winning is, understand that you're redefining a winning does not mean that you're losing. This is Dr. Ferguson. Have a super fantastic day. And remember, I love you, but God loves you best.